Hey everybody and welcome to the video. In this video I want to talk about using Git as a junior developer when you're just starting your coding career. So this video will not be a Git tutorial, it is just for junior developers who are already kind of familiar with VCS and the video will contain some tips and tricks to uh, start using Git effectively at your new job. As a junior dev there are some Git commands you should already be familiar with. These are the basics and you will use them a lot, like pretty much every day. First of all, you have git init, which you use to create a repository in the directory you are working in. Then you have git clone, which you use to clone a local or remote repository. Then you have git add, which you use to add your files to the so-called staging area. It basically tells git that you want to add these files to the next commit. Next up you have git commit, which actually commits your stage changes to your local repository. Using git commit you will essentially create a snapshot of your working directory at that time. Then you have git push, which will upload your local changes to the remote repository. And opposing git push you have git pull, where you download the changes from the remote repository to your local machine. You also have git fetch. Git fetch will do the same thing, but will not apply those changes yet to your local repository. Git pull will apply those changes to your local repository. And then you have git status, which will display the current state of your working directory. It will show you if files aren't being tracked and which files are and aren't yet staged. And another one which you will use a lot is git log which will show a log of the latest commits. There are many more useful git commands like git branch and git checkout, but I don't want to spend too much time on explaining all these different commands. I think the commands I just mentioned are the absolute basics and will, you will use them many times during your day. So you know these basic git commands, but how do you actually use them? When working with git, there are different workflows you can use. A workflow is basically a recipe you and your team follow in order to use Git in a specific way. This will first of all make sure that you can work on the same code base with multiple developers at the same time, but it will also make sure that you can fix production issues quickly. First I will discuss the basic workflow. In this workflow you just have the master branch, you clone it, you work on it, you commit your changes and then you push your changes up to the remote repository where other developers can clone those changes again and work on them on, by themselves. This flow will mostly be useful for your own projects or for very small teams. For bigger projects or bigger teams you can already consider the next workflow which is the feature branch workflow. In this workflow you still have the master branch but for each feature you work on you create a separate branch. When you are done working on that feature, you merge your changes back to the master branch. This is a workflow that ensures features are ready before they are merged to master and you can work with other developers on different features at the same time. The next workflow I want to discuss is git flow. So this uh, workflow takes the feature branch workflow and expands on it. So between the feature branches and the master branch, they also add a develop branch. The develop branch contains pre-production code. This means that the develop branch contains new features, but they aren't released yet. Once those changes are ready to be released, they will be merged to master and then maybe to, through some automated CICD, they will be released from master to production. Gitflow is a popular and pretty nice flow because it allows you to work as a team on separate features that you want to release at the same time. Also, your master branch will almost always reflect the code that is on production right now. So that makes fixing incidents or bugs a lot easier. Another notable mention in Git workflows is the forking workflow. This workflow is quite different from the previous workflows because instead of creating a branch or whatnot, you fork the entire repository. That means that you essentially copy the entire remote repository and work on your own private copy of the code. Once you are done, you can create a pull request to the original repository and then the maintainer of that code base can check your pull request, make comments on it and decide whether or not to accept your pull request. This is a very flexible way of working. 
It is mainly used in open source projects and you can imagine why it would be convenient to work this way when you have, for instance, thousands of developers working on your code, like the Linux kernel. There are many more variations of these flows and there are also new and different flows entirely. But I think knowing the flows I mentioned earlier will help you learn new flows faster and also help you work together with your teammates efficiently. Next up, I'd like to talk about merging versus rebasing. So uh, in the previous section, I talked about merging back to master. But there are different ways to get your changes from your branch into the master branch. One of them is rebasing. So what is merging, what is rebasing, and how do you use each of these? So imagine you are working on a feature branch, you've made some changes, you've committed those changes, and you are done. Then you can merge your branch into master. A new merge commit will be created, which ties together both branches. As a result, your feature branch will always have an extra commit in order to merge the two branches together. Another option is to rebase. According to the documentation, rebase will reapply your commits on top of another branch. So basically it takes your commits and then puts those at the end of the new commits in the master branch. You basically rewrite the history of the master branch in order to get a cleaner timeline. Working this way is really nice. It results in a really clean timeline, but it's also its biggest downside. You shouldn't actually rewrite history of a public Git repository. It will probably go wrong at some point and you will probably lose some changes then. So when you will be working in a team with multiple teammates, you probably won't rebase branches into each other like this, but it is, in my opinion, perfectly acceptable to do in your own projects uh, and help you clean up your, uh, your Git history. So when would rebasing be a good idea? You can use interactive rebasing to squash commits. So say you have three commits. One contains the actual changes, the second one contains a minor bug fix, and the third one you just created for uh, bumping the version. You can squash these three commits in one by using the git rebase-i command. This will start up the, the git rebase interactive mode. When you then merge your changes into master, it will add the one merge commit, resulting in only two commits, the one with all your changes and also the bug fix, fix and also the bumping of the version, the one merge commit, and that's it. This, in my opinion, is the best of both worlds, how you use merging and rebasing to create a, a cleaner Git history where you can also see where other changes are coming from. So what if you want to bump the version, but you already pushed your changes to the remote repository? For fixing these uh, small changes, you can use the git commit dash dash amend command. This will amend your current changes to the latest commit that was already pushed to the remote repository. With this flag, you are rewriting git history, just like git rebase. And when you change history and you want to push your commits to the remote repository, you will get an, you will get an error. Therefore, you should use git push-force, which will force your changes from your local repository onto the remote repository. An important mention here is that you should actually use git push-force with lease. This will check if the remote repository is still the same as your local repository, because in the meantime, when you use git push-force, another developer could have changed that branch and you will overwrite their changes with yours. So if there's any changes in between, it won't push, uh, force push your changes onto the remote repository, but will actually stop you from doing that. And actually when you use ZSH and you use the alias GPF, which means git push force, you will already automatically use git push force with lease because it's just the safer way to force push your changes onto the remote repository without any sacrifices at all. A side note here about git commit amend and the git push force is that you should only use them on small changes and I will probably discuss with the more senior developers in your team uh, in order to uh, see how they feel about it because not everybody likes rewriting git history and sometimes they just prefer to keep the history as it is uh, even when you make a mistake so discuss with your teammates okay that's all I had to share in this video 
Please let me know if you want me to dive deeper into one of the subjects, like the Git workflows or maybe the Git rebase command. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please uh, give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.